Each joint has its own movement path and its own range of motion. And each joint moves a specific amount. Manipulations on the joints are performed to restore joint mobility and to relieve compression of the nerve root, for example, which exits through the intervertebral foramen and can become compressed in cases of subluxation. The main goal is to restore movement to a joint that has become fixed. This is always done together with work on the muscles as a comprehensive approach. But the manipulation technique itself must be practiced separately. One common issue that can lead to injury during manipulation when a chiropractor causes harm to the patient is incorrect technique and incorrectly identifying the location of restricted mobility. Either the restriction is not found at all or it's found in the wrong place and the manipulation is done on the wrong joint. There are several ways to identify this. The simplest one is by assessing the range of motion of the joint, which I'm going to show you now. In other words, you can detect motion restrictions without muscle testing simply by checking the joint's range of motion. That means testing whether the joint's movement range matches what it should be by comparing it to the same joint on the other side. For example, we check the movement of one joint. We move it in one direction, then in the other. Both of these movements should be equal. If we see that the range is greater in one direction and feel resistance in the other, we perform the manipulation on the joint where the restriction is found. A key requirement for manipulation is that the push, the manipulative thrust, must be aligned with the joint's axis. All injuries happen when this movement does not follow that axis. So the thrust must match the direction of the joint. But you won't be able to perform it if the joint's axis is not properly aligned. In that case, you have to apply much more force to move the joint. And in doing so, you also injure it. That should never happen. And the manipulation technique itself consists of several parts. The first part is called pre-tensioning. That is, you have a joint, and it has a certain range of motion. You've determined that there's a limitation. You felt that it doesn't move any further. And the first step in the manipulation is preloading. You bring the joint to almost its full range. You move it until you feel that springy resistance. Once you feel that, you stop. Then, from that same position, without returning, you deliver the manipulative thrust. It's a sharp, quick, explosive movement. But it must be clearly limited in range. If the movement is too big, you can tear the ligaments of the joint. If it's too small, the manipulation won't work. You have to know how much range to use for each joint and for each individual, depending on their body type. You compare movements from right to left. If the joint on the other side moves normally, then you already know how this joint should move. And you aim to match that range of motion in the joint you're working with. That's the tricky part. You need to repeat it thousands of times before you can do it properly. And even after doing it 50,000 times, each of those will still feel like the first time. So it's very difficult. You also need a volunteer to practice on. At first, you can practice on animals, cats, or dogs. But sooner or later, you'll need to work on people, very carefully. There are no models to train on. You can only learn it by feeling it, by practicing on a live person. But you should never try to do it on your own. If you're not a doctor or a chiropractor, this video is for them. And again, you really should have turned it off at the very beginning. If you're not a doctor of chiropractic, 
what we're about to demonstrate is something you should not try. Just watch and be amazed at how good I am at manipulation. Now, there's one joint here that's basically immobile. There's limited mobility in the right joint between the third and fourth vertebrae. This joint isn't moving as much as it should. The purpose of the manipulation is to restore that mobility. We begin by bringing it into preload. First, to determine the issue, we go through all the joints and compare the movements, the range of motion on the right and the left. On the right side, the movement is more limited. The manipulation itself is done like this. First, the joint is brought into preload. That means we move it through its full available range until we reach the point where we feel the restriction. That's what we call preload. We stop at that point, and then we make the manipulative thrust here. It's a sharp movement that must follow the joint's axis exactly. The motion shouldn't go off in a different direction. It should follow the correct axis. In this case, it's slightly upward with a bit of a twist. If we get the angle right, it takes almost no effort to perform the manipulation. And that's how manipulation is done on a fixed joint. When there's a joint block or subluxation, there's a chance that during rotation or bending, the nerve root can get pinched, damaged, or injured and sometimes even the vertebral artery can be affected. You can identify the problem by checking the range of motion. For example, if the joint on the right is stiffer than the one on the left. Ideally, this is done with the person lying down. It's more comfortable that way. But in principle, with enough experience and skill, you can do it while the person is sitting. Okay? We've found the fixed joint. It's the joint between the vertebra and the rib. That's the fourth rib. There it is, and it's stuck. This is the joint between the transverse process of the vertebra and the rib. It doesn't move during inhalation or exhalation. So here it is. This rib moves forward here, but here it stays fixed during both inhalation and exhalation. There are a few ways to release this fixation. One of them is more complex. Okay, lie down on your stomach. Just so you can see, I'll demonstrate. Here's the fixed rib. There it is again. It's not moving. This method is more complicated. I take the rib and bring it into pretension. Inhale. Exhale, 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 exhale. And at that moment, I perform the manipulative thrust. It's not very comfortable and it didn't quite work. On the stomach, it's tricky, but there's another way to do it. There's a space between the scapula and the vertebra. Between the scapula and the vertebra. It's not very convenient to manipulate in that spot. Lie on your back. This is a more comfortable position. Move a little closer here. This is the most convenient way. I perform manipulations on these joints like this most of the time. I find the rib again. Same process, several steps. First, we bring it to preload. Inhale, exhale, 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 exhale. There, it's moving. Sometimes there's a click louder or quieter but the most important thing is to feel the movement happening in the joint exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale these joints are located lower down but they're still between the vertebrae and the ribs here there are several fixations on both sides 
This limits the ability to fully rotate during inhalation and exhalation. It stops you from turning completely. So there's a restriction in movement. Some of the ribs are fixed here and that prevents full rotation. It also makes it harder to take a full breath in and out. First, I go through the full range of motion in these joints. I determine which rib is most restricted, where the movement is the tightest. Then I bring it to pretension, and from that position, I perform the manipulation. That's enough. Now the other side. We check joint mobility. We're looking for a joint with limited range of motion. On one side, then the other. There's a fixed joint on the left side between the fourth and fifth cervical vertebrae. Mobility is limited here on the left. And there's also limited movement between the first vertebra and the occipital bone. That's on the right side, right here. In this spot where the first vertebra connects to the occipital bone, the joint should also move like this. But right now, it's fixed and not moving. Now we're going to release these two fixations. First step, as always, is to create pretension. We move the joint through its full range of motion. And then the second step is the manipulation itself. That was the fifth vertebra, between the fourth and fifth vertebrae. Now we'll move on to the first one. Okay, relax. That's the second one. Sit up. In the thoracic region, same thing. You can check each joint like this. See which one moves and where there's a fixation. There are a few here. This is the third rib on this side and the fourth rib here. Again, it's the same type of joint between the vertebra and the rib. Here's one rib. Here's the second. Now we'll move them as well. They're clearly fixed. During inhalation and exhalation, all of this should move. Each of these ribs should move. Every joint here, called the costotransverse joint, between the rib and the transverse process of the vertebra, should be in motion. When you inhale, the intercostal muscles and respiratory muscles are working, and each of those joints should move. But this one isn't. Okay, we've located the fixed joint. It's not moving. Inhale. Exhale. Same process. We found the rib with restricted movement. First movement, full range through the joint. Exhale, 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 all the way through. Then we do the manipulative thrust. Okay, lower ribs now. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Rotate. One fixed rib here, and another one here is preventing the turn. Now, the other side. This side has more movement. Just one fixed rib here. Same process. The key is doing the movement correctly. Manipulation is often done incorrectly, and that can injure the person or the joint, especially when preloading is skipped, and it goes straight to the manipulative thrust. That's the problem. They can't determine the exact range of motion that's needed. The movement itself matters. Inhale. Exhale. I'm going through the full range of motion. Then we continue. Every joint has its own specific range of motion. Inhale. Exhale. 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 There you go. Here you can assess the range of motion and check if there's any nerve root impingement. You can go joint by joint in the manipulation position to assess movement between the fifth vertebra and the sacrum, between the fifth and fourth, between the third and fourth. There's a fixation right here between the third and fourth vertebrae. That's the joint that isn't moving through its full range. 
That's the one we need to work on. That's the one we need to move. Inhale, exhale. You can use different leg positions. You can bend the leg or keep it straight. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is to target the correct joint, the right joint for manipulation, and apply the force at the correct angle.